Well, as we've been telling you throughout Good Day, it is Wear Red Day. The American Heart Association's way of supporting heart health and raising awareness for cardiovascular disease. So joining us right now is Dr. Evelina Graver. She's a cardiologist at Northwell Health, as well as a volunteer with her. Also here to demonstrate um, hands-only CPR. Yeah, which is different. Okay. We're going to learn. Yeah. Okay, I like that is Ty Tylen Butler and Leah Storm Roche. Uh, so now high school seniors from the Urban Assembly School for Management, nice to have you here. Mm -hmm. So Doc, let's talk about women's heart health because a lot of people think breast cancer is the number but, one killer for women, but it's actually... It's not. Right. It's not. We now know the fact that more women die from actually from heart disease than all cancers combined. That's including breast cancer. Like you mentioned, breast cancer, lung cancer, and colon cancer combined. We lose one woman to cardiovascular disease every 80 seconds. And that's way too many women to lose to heart attacks, to strokes, to heart failure. It's unnecessary. And that's why the American Heart Association is doing so much research right now. Because unfortunately, too many women are underdiagnosed, undertreated, and under-researched. Can you give us an idea of what we need to look for? Yes. Because sometimes people say they don't know the signs. Right. So the science for women and heart disease is a little bit different than for men, right? Hollywood has done a phenomenal job at having uh, a man who is clutching his chest, mm -hmm. right? We immediately always think the fact that they're having a heart attack. When a woman clutches her chest, we assume she's having a panic attack or choking, so we want to give them a Heimlich maneuver. Not always the case. Women have atypical symptoms. Majority of the symptoms are actually shortness of breath, fatigue, nausea, abdominal discomfort. Some women can have chest tightness, but different. They won't have an elephant sitting on their chest. It'll feel more like tightness around sort of the chest area, more than the actual pressure that everybody else actually expects to have with a heart attack. Hopefully you figure this out before someone has a heart attack, but what are some of the signs you should look for for cardiovascular disease, period? Right. So cardiovascular disease is important to recognize early on, and we can do so much regarding to prevention of it, because 80% of cardiac disease is actually preventable. So what do we need to look out for? If you're exercising and all of a sudden you cannot complete the exercise that you know that you can do, that's a sign. If all of a sudden you're walking down the block or two that you're used to walking and now you're getting shortness of breath, you're beginning to have symptoms. So we talked about hands-on CPR. If you should unfortunately run into someone who's having a heart attack, you may be able to save their life by doing this. First of all, explain it to us, and we're going to ask the young ladies, Talon show, and yeah. Leah Storm, but you like Storm, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, Storm, you guys are going to help us with the demonstration, but first tell us what hands-on CPR is. So hands-only CPR is really trying to perfuse the brain, trying to get that blood flow to the brain and to the other organs at the time when your heart stops, during the time of the cardiac arrest. Now, a lot of people confuse between a heart attack and a cardiac arrest. Rest. Mm. And the easiest way to sort of remember is the electrical component and plumbing component, right? So cardiac arrest is when the electrical component of the heart just stops. You have a ventricular arrhythmia or a fatal arrhythmia and the heart stops. A heart attack is a plumbing problem when there is an issue with your coronary arteries and there is a significant blockage that potentially does not allow enough blood flow to the heart. A heart attack can lead to a cardiac arrest but two separate entities. All right. But these girls let's, are phenomenal. Let's see. Hands only. So, so, okay, I always thought it was all hands up only CPR. No? Well, it used ladies, to be. Um, you, you'll no. tell us. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so, ladies, come on. Yes. So, uh, come show us what we need to do. You want to go for it? So, in the past, there was. Storm, sort come of the, on this side, I, I guess, right? Part of the oh, basic life. Are oh, you going to yeah, stay right there? Anything. Okay. Yeah. Part All of right. basic life, they used to potentially be able to, there's a correlation between giving the breaths, right, and then compressions. We now know the fact that hands-only CPR is just as effective. Don't okay? concern yourself with the breathing part of it. Correct. Do the Concentrate, right, and just keep it very, very simple. Because Talent? all you have to do is mm -hmm. you see somebody potentially on the ground, right? You assess the fact that they're not responsive. You ask somebody next to you, right? Or if you're by yourself, you call 911 immediately, and then you immediately start compressions, right? Okay. And in Doctor, the background, walk her through it because I, I'm afraid we're going to run out. So okay. let's let's see how you do it. So what Go. you first do, you want to check for the responsiveness, as she said. You tap their shoulders. Okay. If there's no response, then you want to take your dominant hand, so the hand that you write with, mm -hmm. and your other hand on top of it. You want to bring your shoulders to be on top of your hands, and then you just bring your weight down about two inches into the chest. 
and you would just keep doing that. And then since someone would have called 911 already, you would just be waiting for additional responses to come So you just come keep doing that forever keep, until somebody comes? Right, you're waiting for potentially somebody to get there, right? And you continue doing it, so you never ever stop, right? You keep on going, you're getting enough of that blood flow, you're waiting for the emergency services to arrive, right? And in the back of your head, you write, you keep this song playing, right? Mm -hmm. So the staying one of the alive. best, staying alive, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going, right? So you want 100 to 120 beats per minute to make sure that you continue to get that blood flow to the brain and to the rest of the body while we're actually getting some help. Right. Well, one of the benefits of having so many people hopefully learn this is that yep. when one person Keep gets going. tired, if it takes a while, yep. then you can actually switch, switch off as right. the other person does. Absolutely. Knows. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, this has an opportunity to save a life. Everybody should learn CPR. All right, this is why we're wearing red today. Yes, it is. Thank you so much, Dr. Evelina Graver with Northwell Hospital. Thank you. Thailand Storm, we appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you both. Thank you. Thank uh, you. She gave up. <laughs> no, the is no, going to We have to go to a commercial. That's oh, okay. what it is. Actually, we actually need to check in with Audrey right now as to find out uh, what's going on with the weather here. Thank you so much, ladies.